just go all Casey Neistat on you there. All right, we are trying some different framing options here, guys. Stay with me. How you doing? I hope you're well. Welcome back to my channel. This is EcoBoost. My name's Kate Arnell, and if you haven't subscribed, think about it. Today I wanted to do a little latest favourites video. First up, Bulk Market, which is London's first zero waste shop and it's very cool. At the moment it's currently in a pop-up location but it will be moving to a permanent location soon. It opened about a month ago and it's just dreamy. It's located in Dalston, which is kind of northeast London, which on the map looks like it's flipping ages away from me but it takes me just over half an hour to get there and... Oh, it's brilliant. And I love that I can get things like maple syrup, apple cider vinegar. There are things like organic yogurt and organic cream. Also things to make beauty products like clays and shea butters and various oils. And there are even things like essential oils in bulk. So I'm pretty happy about that. I've been a couple of times already and oh, just super happy that we've got a shop like that in London finally and hopefully more are going to start popping up as well. In fact I've just done a little video with Sarah from Hubbub and I took her on her first ever zero waste grocery shopping trip in bulk market so I'll link that in the info box below. Up next it's a YouTube channel, one that I really enjoy watching. It's called Living Waste Free and Samantha White is just flipping hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I really enjoy watching her videos. She's funny, she's relatable, I feel like we could be friends, and she's living a zero waste lifestyle too. So if you want to go check her out, please do. Samantha, you rock, keep it up. Your secondhand clothing haul <laughs> really made me chuckle. Up next, it's the story of stuff. How our obsession with stuff is trashing the planet, our communities, and our health, and a vision for change by Annie Leonard. I actually bought this secondhand. It's such an interesting book. I'd already seen the cartoons and little movies that they've done over on their YouTube channel and through various um, social media streams, but this is packed with so much extra information. The section about diamonds, I'm gonna find it hard to look at an engagement ring again, even my own, without sort of having some serious questions in there. She also talks about things like planned obsolescence. She didn't mention how weird my fringe is at the moment, but I'm sure that'll be in the story of stuff too. And at the end of each kind of section where it talks about a problem, she offers a potential solution or a better way of doing things. She just writes in a really easy to read, very normal way. It's very approachable. Truth paste. <laughs> it honestly sounds like it's some sort of witchy concoction that's gonna make you tell the truth. Actually, the truth is, it's pretty awesome to brush your teeth with. My husband doesn't like using bicarbonate of soda, which is something I mostly use, so I finally found this, which is a plastic-free alternative. And before this, he was still using like a natural toothpaste, but in a plastic tube. So I've been on the hunt for something that wasn't in a plastic tube for a while, and found this stuff, and my goodness, it's really lovely to use. It comes in two different flavors, I think. This one's peppermint and wintergreen. I can't remember what the other one is but I'll link it in the info box below. Basically it's all natural, it's free from any nasties and this one smells incredible. So if you like that kind of minty freshness that you get from regular toothpaste, this will deliver on that front my friends. It's got a lot of organic ingredients as well and he really likes using this. Honestly, I've started using it too because I really like it. Um, I'm sort of alternating between this and the bicarbonate of soda. But it's a great plastic free alternative. It's a glass jar with a metal lid. And at Bulk Market, the zero waste place I mentioned earlier, she has a little drop off for jars to be reused by other customers who maybe didn't bring enough jars. Any extras that I don't use, because I do like to save jars occasionally to repurpose, then I'll take them up there and other customers can reuse them. Hooray. So we're big fans of this. And remember, zero waste isn't about being perfect. You will never reach zero. I will never reach zero. And brushing my teeth with bicarbonate soda was fine for me, but it didn't work for my husband. So we found this as a sort of next best thing. Up next, it's this little organic wine refill. Ooh. So as you guys probably remember, or you might not know, I didn't actually used to drink alcohol at all and then I got married. And then over the past kind of year and a half, I've developed a bit of a taste for it. I think I've become much more of an instinctive eater and I started out with beer and I really like the taste of beer now. And then red wine, I had a little bit of that with a meal here and there. And then recently, 
white wine as well. I still want to say I've never been drunk. I just like the taste, so just like half a glass or something. And wine has been a bit of a tricky thing to find because I like to try and find things that are organic as well as being refillable. I hear that grapes can be quite heavily sprayed with pesticides. So I passed Borough Wines recently, the one in Borough Market, but they've got the same wines across all of their stores. And this is one made from organic grapes. Um, I've got it on my phone somewhere, what it is. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I'll pop it up on screen right now. There you go. And it's really nice. Now I've tried a wine refill from Whole Foods in the past, and let's just say it wasn't necessarily the nicest wine that we got at the time. I don't know if that's a common thing or maybe it was a one-off barrel that wasn't great, but annoyingly I even gave a bottle to a friend. <laughs> at a dinner party and I think it might have put them off refill wine forever. So it's really great to find an organic refillable wine that tastes great. And my mother-in-law and sister-in-law have got very opposing tastes when it comes to wine. Um, they like very different wines. So I took a bottle of this round to them and I was like, one of you's probably gonna love it, one of you's probably not gonna like it that much um, because they are so different and they both really liked it and I really like it so it's an all-round crowd pleaser. I probably don't know enough descriptive terms to tell you what it's like but um, I want to say sort of floral and crisp maybe. We've got another book. This one is called The Third Plate by Dan Barber. Dan Barber is a well-known chef. He's got Blue Hill, the restaurant in New York and I also came across him on a Netflix series. I think it was called The Chef's Table. I think. This is his book and he talks about sustainability from a chef's point of view. How chefs can be one of the biggest influences actually when it comes to food trends and if some of them start promoting a certain way of doing things then it often catches on throughout other restaurants as well. So yeah, I, I think it was a really interesting and different perspective to food and sourcing and how he's come to source so many of his ingredients and some of the really interesting people that he's met along the way. I really enjoyed this book. It was very well written and when I first opened it and finished just the first page I was in bed and I turned to my husband and said oh, I'm gonna really enjoy reading this book. The next item is something I don't actually have here at all to show you but I will cut away to a picture of it now. It's an organic wool duvet by Natural Matte and I'm obsessed. For about the last year and a bit at my mother-in-law's place in Cornwall, I've been sleeping under a kind of synthetic polyester filled duvet. So recently I made the call to get an organic wool duvet. I'd read really great things about how they can help regulate your temperature and then I spoke to the guys at Natural Mat and they said yes, wool is great at helping to regulate your temperature so it keeps you nice and cool in the summer and warm in the winter. And another friend of mine has got one as well and she was raving about it. So I got it, I love it. And since swapping it out, I've had such a comfortable night's sleep. I didn't get hot and sweaty. Even my husband said he slept really well with it. So it's been totally worth it for us. Also, when I ordered it, I sent them a little message saying, hey guys, would it be okay to send it to me without any plastic packaging? And they did a great job. They just used an upcycled box and put the duvet straight in. So it can never hurt to ask. And my final favorite is this. It's my homemade dishwasher powder. As you guys know, if you followed this channel for a little while, the struggle to find a dishwasher tablet or powder or gel that was plastic free, it's been pretty darn real. So this has got three ingredients and in the past, the main issue I've had has been trying to source washing soda slash soda crystals, it's the same thing, without plastic packaging. So in the UK, it only really comes in large plastic bags by Dreepack. I've emailed them several times about it. They keep emailing back saying that they're not changing their packaging. That's been my main struggle. I then found some by a brand called EcoDo on biggreensmile.com. So I bought a couple of boxes of that just to try making things like my own dishwasher powder and laundry powder. And you know what? it worked. Oh. I'd also tried to make my own uh, washing soda from bicarbonate of soda and you do that by heating it up and it evaporates the water, it changes the chemical balance, that's me going all scientific on you there, and it basically turns it into washing soda. But the instructions that I had been following originally, and I suspect there might be a typo in the article I was following, suggested that I heat it at 200 degrees 
Fahrenheit, which in Celsius, which is what I work in, is flipping low. Then I read another article which had similar instructions, but it said to heat it at something like 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius or 250 degrees Celsius, basically a much higher temperature. So I tried that and I bought some pH testing strips just to really geek out so that I could compare the soda crystals from the box to the ones that I'd made at home to see if they were kind of roughly the same pH level. And yes, yes they were my friends. So I finally nailed making my own washing soda. This is made of three ingredients, washing soda, citric acid and sea salt. I will do a whole other video about how I made this, how I made my homemade laundry powder and also how I made washing soda from bicarbonate of soda. That's going to be the video that breaks the internet, I'm sure of it. And put simply, this stuff works wonderfully. I feel like I'm hitting a little bit of a zero waste sweet spot lately. I've got more access to things from bulk, more refills available, and I'm getting to a point where I can actually make things like my own dishwasher powder. So there you go, those are my latest favourites. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a little thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, then I'd love you to hit that red subscribe button. I've also bought several awesome things secondhand recently. So I'm gonna do a little secondhand thrift haul video and talk you through all the cool pieces that I found. Things like a food mill and a grater. Um, it does get a little more exciting than those two items, but they are genuinely in the mix. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with me if you have already subscribed, and I will see you very, very, very soon. Love ya.